A new report from the United Nations this morning warns global warming has already caused irreversible damage and the risks are now greater than previously thought because of how sensitive infrastructure and economies those growing threats to people in poverty had never been factored in by the mortgage industry before, but that's about to change. Diana Olick explains in her continuing series on the rising risks from climate change. Hurricane winds are getting stronger, common storms are getting wetter, wildfires are spreading faster, and millions of U.S. homes sit in the path of all of it. But the housing market currently doesn't factor that climate risk into home values, leading one set of researchers in a new report to claim U.S. homes already exposed just to flood risk are now overvalued by roughly $200 billion. That has profound future implications on the nation's nearly $12 trillion mortgage market. Do you think that mortgage underwriting in general is taking into account the risks from climate change? To the full extent, no. No, I think there's still more that we have to do, and I think we just don't have the analytics yet to do it. So Fannie Mae, which backs more than 40% of all residential mortgages, just launched its defense, hiring climate risk modeling firms like First Street, Jupiter, and others to figure out how to factor climate risk into home values and mortgage underwriting. We really are interested in not only what current state is of natural disasters and the impact of our book of business, but also what does U.S. housing look like decades in the future. First Street, for example, looks at climate risk from floods, fire, even wind, and brings it down to an individual property level. Jupiter studies neighborhoods and communities. So far, Judge says they've learned that climate impact varies widely across the country, but impacts vulnerable communities far more than affluent ones. He agrees climate risk is not priced into the market and consumers are not aware of potential future costs. Mortgage lenders are also struggling to figure out the financials. It is a massive challenge for all of us to really think about. But as of now, Wells Fargo does not factor climate risk into its underwriting. So to date, it hasn't. I think it's something that we're evaluating like the industry is. Wells Fargo's Christy Furcho just finished a term as chair of the Mortgage Bankers Association, which issued a special report from its research institute in 2021 saying climate change may increase mortgage default and prepayment risks, trigger adverse selection in the types of loans that are sold to the GSEs, increase the volatility of house prices, and even produce significant climate migration. Well, it's certainly impacting how we're thinking about mortgages and what we need to do. The problem is the models from the different firms, as well as from government agencies like FEMA, all vary widely. And Judge says that has made the project harder than he expected. So you're not at the point yet where you're saying, I'm not going to back the mortgage on this home because the risk from climate change is just too high? No, we're not there yet. The first step is understanding what the damage will be to each property. The second step is, how is that going to change borrower behavior? And how is that going to change valuation of properties? That's a lot of the work we have to do. Is it five years away? I'm not sure. But it can't come soon enough. New research from CoreLogic shows that on the current climate trajectory, the estimated number of U.S. homes that will be significantly impacted by climate-related disasters goes from less than a million in 2030 to over 62 million by 2050. In value, that's losses of just under $200 million to close to $9 billion in any given year. Back to you. So I, I, maybe I'm not understanding something. The, the person from Wells Fargo there who said we weren't really taking climate into, into account, is that in part because to write a mortgage you have to have full insurance coverage on a home so that, so that the, the lender would then be protected? Well, we're talking about homes that are not necessarily in a FEMA floodplain. So if you are in a flood area designated by FEMA, of course you're required to have that insurance. But there are so many more homes at risk now. That's what they're really...